This is Mac from jlptbootcamp.com here with a N4 grammar lesson. And today we're going to talk about nikui, yasui, and kata, and how to use these with ma stems to extend your uh, Japanese speaking abilities. And to set the scene, please imagine you're in Japan and you've decided to, do, to learn how to do some cooking. And so you say to your friend, Nihon no ryori o tsukuritai. And which, uh, Nihon no is uh, Japanese, ryori is cooking, o is object marking particle. As you remember from N5, uh, tai is I want to. So tsukuritai is I want to make. And your friend responds, sokka, okonomiyaki wa dou desu ka? Sokka is, oh, okay, yeah. Um, and he's asking about okonomiyaki, which is a kind of, the English translation is savory pancake. It's basically a, a lot of things kind of mixed together, cabbage, batter, uh, and some meat mixed together and fried on a plate. It's very famous in um, Hiroshima and Osaka. And so he's asking, do desu ka? Is, uh, what about uh, okonomiyaki? And you don't know okonomiyaki, so you ask, okonomiyaki? Nani sore? So you don't know what it is. Nani sore is, what is that? Kind of casually asking, uh, what is that? Um, and your friend responds, oishi yo, tsukuri yasui. So oishi is delicious. Uh, yo, is, yo is, I assure you. And tsukuri yasui is, it's easy to make. Um, and so your friend is using yasui, and uh, this is what you use to talk about something that is easy to do, and very easy to form. You just take the ma stem plus yasui uh, to form this, and you can use it with um, pretty much any uh, verb that you would like to use it with. So um, to give you a, a more polite example, you would say, sono sake wa nomi yasui desu. So this is um, this is the form that you would see on the N4, N4 test, the polite form of uh, Japanese. Uh, in Japan, the real Japan, you would hear the more casual form, which is what um, you heard before in the situation talking to your friend. So, but uh, this sentence, sono sake, so that um, sake is uh, very easy to drink. And... Uh, because it's a very premium sake. And yasui is something you have to kind of remember is that yasui is an e adjective. So it's changing a um, it's changing a verb into an e adjective. And this e adjective can be conjugated. So uh, for example, here we could say sono sake wa nomi yasuku nai desu. So this that uh, sake is a bit difficult to drink. It has kind of a strong aftertaste. It's got a kind of a bite to it. So um, we can conjugate this anyway. And, and of course, we could say, nomi yasuku nakata. So it wasn't easy to drink. We can kind of keep <laughs> conjugating this, uh, which makes for sometimes some difficult listening uh, on the N4 test um, in, in Japanese in general. So just be aware you can conjugate these as well. So and let's just take a real quick moment to uh, go over ma stems. Uh, went over them briefly for N5, but basically the ma stem of a verb is where you uh, um, conjugate it into the polite form with mas, and then you take off the mas ending and you use uh, the front part, and that's the mas stem. So uh, take note here, group one, is usually uh, verbs that have e, uh, e mas, so um, e mas to uh, to speak, and uh, for example, kaki mas to write. These um, e uh, ones ending in e in the mas form. These are group one. Um, it, they uh, they conjugate um, that way. So this is, f uh, for example, to speak is eu. Um, and you conjugate it imas. Uh, to write is kaku. You conjugate it kakimas. Um, you change it to e. That's a lot of uh, a lot of verbs in Japanese are formed this way. You change the last um, ending kana into the e of that particular kana row, and you add mas. However, um, there's also group two, which if 
they end in e, um, the a sound. So taberu is the one that's um, from N5. You would just take off the ru and add mas. However, there are some irregular ones um, in group two, the e verbs. So, for example, um, to live is uh, ikimas. Um, to to get up, okimas. Mm-hmm. Um, these are uh, so. It's okiru is the is the base dictionary form for get up. You change it to uh, okimas, and uh, it's the same for iru to exist. You change to imas. You um, kind of these irregulars. Uh, take note of these. These I have the whole chart in the PDF. Uh, for this uh, for this level and for available at the premium site, so if you um, these are all of the group two emas uh, verbs that you'll need to know um, listed here. But going on, uh, you want to start making some okonomiyaki. So you say to your friend, "Ja okonomiyaki no tsukurikata o oshiete kudasai." And ja is well. Okonomiyaki is again that savory pancake. No is um, linking uh, this uh, noun. Okonomiyaki is a noun, linking it to tsukurikata, which is also a noun. So you want to know uh, tsukurikata is the way of making, and so you want to know the way of making okonomiyaki, and that's how you link uh, these two nouns together with that no particle. Um, and O is the object marking particle. Oshiete is uh, to teach, to tell me how to do, and kudasai is please. And your friend uh, responds, Hai, hajime masho. And um, so yes, let's let's start. Let's let's make some okonomiyaki. And you are using the uh, using kata, which is talking about how to do something or the way of doing something. Um, so, for example, this can be used with um, oshieru to teach, to teach me how to do a particular thing, but it can also be used in this way, in this sentence uh, down below, Tanaka-san no hanashikata wa uh, wakari yasui. So, uh, tanas- Tanaka-san, in this case, Ms. Tanaka, um, hanashikata, the way of speaking, her way of speaking, wa is the topic marking particle, uh, wakari yasui, Wakaru is to understand, Yasui is easy to, so her way of speaking is easy to understand. And um, another thing to keep in mind for this uh, kata is that it behaves like a noun. So again, we need to use that no particle to link uh, the, uh, to, to link the describe, the, um, to link a noun in front of it. So you might think that you you would put something like okonomiyaki o tsukurikata or okonomiyaki ga tsukurikata or something like that, uh, but you you wouldn't. You would add this no particle to link the two nouns together um, to describe you know what kind of way of making <laughs> it, literally um, to to form that. So just uh, just be careful always use the no particle. Or you could also use um, the uh, like a, a, a na particle to um, describe this noun. Um, for example, like kire na tabe kata, so how to um, eat it beautifully, um, or an e adjective uh, before the, the noun as well. So moving on to the last uh, situation, here, um, using the last grammar point. So you're having some trouble with the recipe, and you say to your friend, Kono recipe wa chotto yomi nikui, uh, kanji ga ipai da. So, kono recipe wa, so, uh, kono is this, recipe is recipe, of course, wa, topic marking particle. Chotto is a little bit, um, yomi is read, nikui is difficult, so difficult to read. It's a little difficult to read. And kanji ga ipai da, so, Kanji, Chinese characters. Ipai, there's a lot of Chinese characters, so I can't read these Chinese characters. Your friend says, Shinpai shinai de watashi ga oshieru yo. Shinpai is uh, to worry. Shinai de is uh, please don't. 
in watashi ga ai ga is the uh, subject marking particle oshieru is teach and yo is i assure you i tell you that i'm going to teach you and you respond ah arigato so oh thank you is your response of course and you are using uh, nikui which is uh, what we use to talk about something that is difficult to do so ma stem plus nikui uh, for example sono kanji wa aboe nikui des and again pretty simple um, just take the ma stem add nikui to make it difficult to do or not apt to do so um, you you can use this for uh, another like for example um, kware yasui uh, is uh, easy to break for example or easy to break down um, it's apt to break down it, it tends to break down nikui is the opposite of that it tends not to do uh, this so hopefully you got all that let us uh, take a real quick pop quiz what how do you say this in Japanese I totally don't know how to use this machine totally don't know how to use this machine that in Japanese would be kono kikai no tsukai kata wa zenzen wakarimasen so kono kikai this machine tsukai kata the way of using zenzen totally and wakarimasen is uh, don't understand and uh, next one, it's difficult to study while listening to music. It's difficult to study while listening to music. So that in Japanese would be ongaku o kiki nagara, <laughs> nagara benkyo wa shinikui desu. Mm-hmm. So ongaku, music, uh, kiki nagara, while listening. Benkyo is uh, studying, and shinikui is difficult to do. Um, and uh, last one here. Cheap cell phones tend to break. Cheap cell phones tend to break. That in Japanese would be yasui keitai wa kaware yasui desu. So yasui is cheap. Ketai is, um, ketai denwa is the whole um, phrase for cell phone, but usually in casual speech it's just shortened down to ketai, uh, which means portable, but uh, a lot of people just call their cell phones ketai. Wa, um, topic marking particle, kware yasui, it's easy to break. Um, Kawareru is break, yasui is easy to. Um, and so that's it for today. Uh, Real quick, yasui, talk about something that's easy to do or it's it's apt to do something. Nikui is difficult to do or it's not apt to do a particular thing. And kata is talking about how to do something or the way of doing um, something in Japanese. And that's it. So if you, uh, if you happen to know someone that is also studying Japanese that um, uh, I'm sure they would probably find uh, this video helpful. Be sure to send them a link, help them out with uh, these difficult um, and handy uh, Japanese uh, grammar points, Yasui, Nikui, and Kata, uh, and uh, send them a link to this video. And So anyway, have a good uh, week studying. I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. This has been another grammar explanation video from the jlptbootcamp.com premium site. There at the site, you'll find a lot of other extra goodies. For example, all of my guides, including the JLPT Study Guide Kit, which will walk you through how to study for the JLPT, as well as um, how to build very effective mnemonics so that you can remember kanji and vocabulary the first time you see it. Um, I also walk through how to formulate a good test-taking strategy so you know what units, what, uh, what sections of the test to focus on to maximize your points and get the best possible score that you deserve. In addition to that kit, um, I also have grammar guides for the N5 and N4 levels. In those guides, I go over some common mistakes that people make, example, example test questions, extra practice with grammar points, uh, lots of great stuff. 
That's available at jlptbootcamp.com forward slash premium. Uh, I hope to see you very soon at the premium site. This has been Mac from jlptbootcamp.com.